The sermon for the sixth week of the Epiphany is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 to 26. The sermon is entitled, The Blessings of the Epiphany. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we live in a world today where we are defined by so many different things. Now, some people define themselves by what type of car they drive or what type of house they have. Others define themselves by their careers or their achievements. Well, I think for the youth here, I know maybe specifically for the youth, you might define yourselves by your GPA or what college you go to or your social group or even your presence on social media. I think there's a lot of things that define us. But today we must ask ourselves specifically as we look at our gospel text, what defines you? Think about that. What defines you? If someone asks you, hello, my name is, what will you say? Now today we see the definitions given by our God. Our Lord, the Word made flesh, who was with the people there, the crowds, the disciples. And He defines people as what? With the blessings and with the woes. The blessings and the woes. After praying on the mountainside, Jesus comes down with His disciples in the crowd. The crowd was there and many were healed of their disease. And to those who were troubled with unclean spirits, Jesus healed them. A great blessing in itself. But it was in the power of God, His Word, that by His very work, by His very miraculous work, they were defined by His name. No longer were they defined by unclean spirits. No longer were they defined by their diseases. But it was Jesus who defined them by His restoring work, giving them a newness of life, curing them from the disease that debilitated them for so long, and rescuing them to a new creation. Identity. Defining who they were, all by what Jesus had done for them. And today in our text, we see two ways in which we are defined. The blessings and the woes. Now it's interesting to, to speak about this, of these blessings and woes, because Jesus describes it in the exact, in the exact opposite in which the world sees Blessings and woes. Poor, hungry, weeping, hated and persecuted. By the world's view, these are the woes. Rich, full, laugh, loved. By the world's view, this is the blessed. But in the Lord, he defines the blessings and the woes the other way around, every, turning everything upside down. Poor, hungry, weeping, hated, persecuted, by the words of Christ, these are the blessings. Rich, full, laugh, loved by the world, these are the woes described by our Lord. It's based on that. We must ask ourselves, what are we defined by? The blessings or the woes? Now, in our Old Testament text, Jeremiah points to Judah's sin. It reads in verse 1, I know uh, that wasn't part of our selected reading this morning, but it says in verse 1, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with a point of diamond it is engraved on the tablet of their heart. This was a deep-seated idolatry of their sin, engraved so deep in their hearts and mind. And we see the result by the Lord's word. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. This is the woe. 
the tragic woe, the destructive woe of the idolatrous heart. And though the world will tout and proclaim that the flesh of man is the object of our trusts, it is in the truth of our Lord, as it reads in our text, that the flesh of man is like a shrub in a desert, and there will be no good for these Dwelling in dry and arid places in the salt lands, a picture of inevitable death and destruction, the greatest and most tragic picture of woe. But there in the Lord's truth, there we find the blessing to trust in the Lord, his word, his complete word. Not what we pick and choose or what conforms to our fleshly whims, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. And there in the Lord, he is no shrub. There in the Lord, he is not by salt lands, but he is a tree planted by water. And though heat may come, there is no fear. The leaves stay green and strong and healthy and they bear fruit. Do you trust in the Lord, my friends? Or do you trust in man? Do you trust in the Lord and, and his complete word? Or do you trust in the world? Because we live in a world that clings so tightly to the woes. The great temptation of man, as we know it, the deceptive words of the devil, the serpent, disguising everything in his false word. And so it is with the world, living in this world, inundated by so many identities, defined in so many different ways. We too get caught up in the whirlwind of who we are in our being, so caught up by the wisdom of man, caught up by our own pride and ego, where our lavish worldly riches becomes our cornerstone, where the fullness of our bellies become the idolatrous light of our lives. And for those who laugh and those who speak well of you, people pleasing, living for the pleasures of this world, being accepted by this world, all the meanwhile forgetting the word of God. The great disease. This is the tragic woe, the woe that leads us to destruction. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. But it is this heart of sin, this flesh of the world that continues to cling to the sinful looking blessings for comfort. For all of us, it's easy, my friends to fall to this fallen world view. Rich, what a blessing the world says. Money and possessions are not evil by themselves, we know, but it is the covetous heart that trusts in these things, this richness, where this idolatrous heart finds its blessings. And the world says, this is what you need, go for it. This is your most important truth. Cling to it. And how easy it is Trust the material over the word of God. The world also says, be full. Make your plate full. Have your bellies full because there you will be satisfied. But when the fullness of the world becomes who you are, when the fullness of the world defines who you are, there goes the word of God. I'm laughing. So great we have it in this temporal life that nothing else matters or so the flesh says. Eat, drink, and be merry. Do what you desire. Live and laugh and love as you please. All the meanwhile as we live in this world, we forget the eternal joy of God. Speaking well of you, so great it is to be accepted by the fallen world as our pride and ego is lifted up, admiration becomes our idol in front of man in our existence. And so easy are we fueled by this temptation, pleasing man rather than God. 
All these are false blessings, as you know. All these are the fiery darts of the devil, so tempting they are to be seen as true blessings in our life. Yet we very well know when we look at that word, we see our sin. There is that wicked heart that desires to be defined by these things. Who doesn't want to have richness of the world? That's what the devil says. Here, here's the fullness. Find it in the world. Here, be accepted by man and not by God. It's okay. People are more important than God and his word. Go, do it. It'll make you feel good. All of us are guilty of this. I mean, look at Jesus' words, honestly. How can anyone believe that those who are poor and hungry, those who weep and are hated, how can that be a blessing? Think about it. How could that be a blessing? All these negative looking pictures, how can that be a blessing for us? But Jesus says, Yes, <laughs> this is who you are. This is what defines you. Because Jesus has done it for you. Jesus, who became poor for you, taking upon the flesh the utter humiliation of this flesh as he took it upon himself, this lowly man taking upon this lowly flesh, not only to come to this world to preach, teach, but he came to be the Lamb of God who was the suffering servant, humbly going to the cross to die for your sins. Even to the point of hunger, as he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, obedient to the will of God, overcoming the devil and his temptation, saying, Be gone, Satan, and he went. It is in that hunger that he continued not to go to the pleasures of this world, but Jesus stayed faithful and obedient, sinless he was, as he endured all the way to the cross. Even to the point of weeping, weeping for Jerusalem, weeping for all these people, Jesus endured even to the point where people hated him reviled him, persecuted him, and all he could say is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. All because of what he has done. You are the blessed through his sacrificial work. And though we are sinners, we are poor, we are hungry, we are weeping, we are the ones who are hated as Christianity has become so countercultural in this world. But take heart. It is I, Jesus says this, who delivers each and every one of you from these calamities. Jesus, becoming poor for you, standing in your place, the one who knew no sin, who became sin for us. Jesus, the one who charged everything unto himself, our poverty, our emptiness, our sorrow and grief, and ultimately the immovable anchor of sin and death, Jesus took upon himself and fled to the cross, fleeing to his own death for you. We're there at the cross, Jesus follows through so that you are truly the blessed. There in his resurrection, Jesus proves and assures you that these are truly the blessed are yous, that these are for you by the body and blood of Jesus. Yours is the kingdom of God. Under his wing you are, under his care, his eternal dwelling of this mighty refuge, the mighty fortress of our Lord. His body and blood covers you. And how rich we are, lavishing in his grace the forgiveness of sins. By the body and blood of Jesus, you are satisfied. Friends, Jesus is saying, by my work and my death and resurrection, the search is over. Your abundance has been delivered to you. Your bellies are full. God is with you. He is your creator, your redeemer, your sanctifier, the one who brought you into this one true faith, the one who led you to the still waters of your baptism. 
to the newness of life that truly you have been rescued from sin, death, and the power of the devil, and you are blessed. You are the children of God. By the body and blood of Jesus, you shall laugh. You shall. You shall be of good cheer. You shall rejoice and leap for joy, knowing that by that empty tomb, there we leap. Because there we know the eternal gloom of sin and death, the crushing of, devils, of the devil's head has been fulfilled. Jesus indeed has. And it is the Lord who brings you the great light and hope of this eternal life. And finally, by the body and blood of Jesus, though the world may revile you, the devil, the persecution, all the temptations thrown at you, all these darts, your great reward is heaven. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. And indeed he has, his empty tomb says it all, and he has done this for you. With all the things that each and every one of you are going through on a day-to-day -day basis, remember who you are. You are not a lone ranger wondering how to subsist in this world. You're not a lone ranger wondering how you're surviving in this dark world, but you are a child of God by what God has done for you. This is who you are. All by the grace of God, all by his love and redemption for you. And though the optics of this world say otherwise, reside in the word, where there Jesus says, blessed are you. I know life is tough. There are moments, many moments. But when we see this word, it reminds us that through it all, each and every one of us are truly blessed. May the Lord continue to guide you in this faith, knowing that you are a blessed, redeemed, purchased and paid for child of God, all by His work for you. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Sunday Sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.